the Lord. Take your Bibles this morning, if you would. Turn with me to the book of Acts. The book of Acts, chapter number 20 this morning. The book of Acts, chapter number 20. I want to talk to you a little while today. I won't take long. We've got uh, food waiting for us. Amen? Amen. And uh, you don't want to get uh, between a Baptist and his food. <laughs> Bad place to be. But we're going to have a good time of fellowship. 56 years God's been so good to our church. Amen. Amen. And I don't just say that. And I'm not trying to be a cheerleader, but I'm just thanking God for all. I mean, when we could, if we could just sit back and think, I mean, folks, really think about how God has been there in moments of crises in our church. Right. I mean, no church is without a crisis once in a while. No church is without problems once in a while. And even the, even with, even the best of churches are still full of people. And people have problems, but the Lord, man, the Lord, people can be fickle, but God's always faithful. Amen. And I thank God for that. And I thank God for his faithfulness. I want to talk to you a little bit about that this morning. In Acts chapter number 20, if you have your place, and would, would you stand with me as we honor the reading of God's word? We're going to start at verse number 16. I'm going to read down uh, through verse uh, 20, or verse 30, and then we're going to go back to uh, uh, verse number 28 to find our text. All right? Look at verse, verse 16. Acts 20, verse 16. For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus because he would not spend the time in Asia, for he hasted if it were possible for him to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. Now we're talking about the mission journeys of Paul. And um, it says in verse 17, And from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, Ye know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save or accept that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither kept I my life dear unto myself, why, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing, shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. And I call your attention back to verse 28, where the Apostle Paul said this to these preachers, Take heed therefore unto yourselves, and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Amen. Now, Lord, we know that you love us. We have no doubt you have shown us in your word. It's on record your love for us. You love the church. You love every local 
Bible-believing, Bible-preaching New Testament church. You love our souls. You love our body. You love us as a congregation. We don't doubt that for a moment. But God, we pray today that we might show you in return how appreciative we are for all that you do for us. We love you this morning. We praise you this morning. We honor you this morning. And God, I certainly want to do justice to this message this morning. I pray that you'd help me. Give me clarity of thought. Give me anointing of the Holy Ghost. Help me to preach with power this morning. Help us to receive the message. And Lord, today, for somebody that's not saved, I pray today might be the day of their salvation. And we'll ask it all in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. You might be seated this morning. A couple of weeks ago on Independence Day, July the 4th, I preached a message that I entitled, How to Save a Nation. And I took my text from 2 Chronicles 7, 14. It's a very familiar text, and you know it. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, you know the scripture, then I'll what? Hear from heaven. Amen. I'll forgive their sins and I will heal their land. We live in a country today that needs our prayers. Amen. We need revival in America, and I don't think any one of us doubts that. We need revival. How's it going to start? Well, I believe it'll start the same way God's always started it, with a group of people that'll get together and pray and do as that verse says, seek his face, humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways. I believe with all my heart that God wants revival to start in his house with his people, if my people. I gave you last that day on that day seven things. I'll not just I'll not preach them, but I just give them to you in that message. Seven things that every believer can do to help save our nation. I said, first of all, you can pray. Pray for revival. I said, number two, you can propagate the gospel. That is, get others saved. Number three, preach the truth. Be a preacher of righteousness. Preach the truth. Number four, practice what you preach. Practice righteousness. Number five, promote good leaders. I said, number six, prepare your children. Help raise them up for the Lord. And then number seven, the final point was that we're to protect our church. Protect your church. You want to save a nation? That's part of the plan. If our, if our nation falls, it'll fall from the inside out. Right. That's right. I don't think we're going to be, I, don't, I think we'll be, I think we will fall before we are defeated. I, in other words, I think we'll surrender. I'm not a prophet nor the son of a prophet, but I'll tell you this this morning, that our country is not near as strong as we hope it is or wish it were this morning when it comes to our resistance against evil. Somehow we have given in to the devil. We see it in politics. We see it in churches. We see it in the daily lives of Christians. We're giving up. We're surrendering ourselves to the devil. Very few are taking their stand in our day, and that's sad. One of the things that we have got to protect in our day and age is our church. Amen. Paul said in these scriptures to these men of God, take heed. The words take heed, very serious command. In other words, pay attention. In other words, you've got a job to do. You've got something very precious inside your lap or on your lap, under your control. It is every under shepherd's responsibility to protect or take heed to his flock. Right? Amen. But it's not just the preacher's uh, job. It's not just my duty to stand watch over the flock and to take heed and to be an overseer. But I believe it's everybody's job. We're all a piece of this thing called the body of Christ. And it's all of our responsibilities to take part in protecting what God has given us. He said, take heed to the flock. Three things that every pastor should do. And that is, he should take heed to the flock. He should lead the flock. And he should feed the flock. I take that very seriously. I want more than anything in the world to be a good pastor. I had to make a decision years ago. I wish I hadn't had to make this decision, but to be honest, every pastor pretty much has to make this decision, whether I wanted to be a good preacher or a good pastor. Sometimes 
I'm not a good, very good preacher, but I, I would rather be a good pastor than a good preacher. Because I understand the importance of the role of the under shepherd because I am an ambassador of the Lord Jesus. I am a representative of the great shepherd. I stand before you representing him. I want to be able that you get, I want to, I want to be able to give you what you need. So that you can go from this place and live the Christian life the way God intended you to live it. Amen. I want to be faithful and I want to help you be faithful. I want to protect you from the devil. There is probably nothing that gives the devil more pleasure than to see a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church die. You've heard me say many times that the church is not an organization. It's an organism. It's a living, breathing organism. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. 1 Corinthians 12 talks about it as a body. In this body is an eye. There's some ears. There's a tongue. There's, there's uh, some of the liver, the kidney, the heart. Uh, and some of us are out on the forefront. They see it. Others are in the background. But all of us are a part of this body. Every part of the body is important. It's a living, breathing organism. Now, having said that, this living, breathing organism must be nourished. It must be fed. It must be protected. Um, I got a couple of plants on my back porch. I love them. They're called citronella plants. You know what a citronella plant? And so they give off a little, you brush up against them and give off this sweet, this smell. It's supposed to be a mosquito plant. You know? And, and I remember when I first got them, they were small. I bought them from Smith's down there and I got them and they were kind of small. Now, I'm, I don't have a green thumb, but boy, I'm trying. And so I got these citronella plants. I got them on the back porch because we got a little mosquito problem. Anybody else know what I'm talking about? Amen. And so, and so I'm thinking maybe that'll help me out. And I've been growing. Now them things are like, they're like bushes, man. They're, I mean, they're humongous now. I fed them too much of that miracle grow, I guess. <laughs> but I've watched them grow from just, you know, from a little bitty. And, and it's given me great pleasure. I didn't force it. I didn't pull on the stems to make them bigger. I didn't try to fluff out the leaf. I just let it go, fed it, nursed it, protected it, made sure that it was out from the, from the elements like that thunderstorm that came through last night and, and stuff like that. And, I, and I've tried my best to just watch over them and let the thing grow naturally. In a sense, that's what we're to do. A lot of churches today, and I remember, and look, I'm, I'm old enough to know that I, I grew up in this thing called Fundamental Baptist. I, I know what it is to, to, to always be under the gun of going after that next soul, try, trying to get somebody else in church and grabbing this one and grabbing that one and making it happen. When all the time the Bible tells us that we labor in vain without the Lord. That's right. And if the house is going to get built, God's going to do the building. Amen. And Acts 2, it's the Lord that added to the church. David is such as should be saved. Now we can manipulate and, and program and do all these things and none of that's wrong in itself. But my friend, I want to see the church grow under God's leadership. All I want to do is just protect it and, and just watch it grow. Amen. Now because every local church is a body, every local church has the responsibility of taking care of their body. But the sad fact is that many churches that were once alive and growing and thriving are no longer in existence today because they did not take care of their body. <clears throat> now, let me make a statement. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I took a <clears throat> big breath and got caught. <laughs> Did you know that as an individual believer, you have eternal security? Amen. You have eternal security. Once saved, always saved. You'll never be lost again. But can I tell you something? That promise is, even though it's for you individually as a believer, it's not a promise to the church. That's right. Every local church has a beginning, and it'll have an ending. At the rapture, when God pulls all believers out of here, we become a church in the air. Amen. Right now, it's a local church. Right? Amen. We have a beginning, we'll have an end. Now, when you were born, you started dying. That's right. That's right. The fact is that it's up to us to exercise and eat right and put what we need inside our body so our body will grow naturally and protect us with vitamins and all that good stuff you're supposed to take. And it's up to us to make sure that we try to keep this body up. The same goes for the church. Now, if you don't keep it up and if you don't protect it and nurse it and feed it and do right by it, then the thing is going to slowly but surely die Amen. until it's gone. And I've seen churches die and it's not a pretty death. It's not. But the devil loves it. 
He would love to destroy Southwest Baptist Church just like he would love to destroy every other church in our town. And I'm not saying we're the only one, but every church in town that holds up a Bible and believes this book and preaches the gospel and tries to live right and do right, he'd love to destroy all of them. That's right. That's right. And he'd love to destroy ours. We have to protect it. We have to protect it. We have to figure out what it is that we can do to keep the devil out. There's not a Sunday morning. Every Sunday morning I get in my closet and in my study and pray. And I always pray, Lord, put a hedge of protection around us this morning. Put a hedge of protection. Don't let the devil and his imps get in. Don't let a foul spirit slip through. God, protect us from those things. Why? Because more than having a house full, and we have a good crowd this morning, but more than numbers, more than nickels and numbers and noses, more than that, I want God's spirit to move. I want to see God's people helped and encouraged and refreshed. I want to see souls saved. I want to see the church be a, an organism and alive, thriving, and, and have that sweet spirit. Amen? Amen? The sweet spirit of God. I don't want the devil bringing that stuff in. So we know the church can be destroyed, but it's usually destroyed from the inside out, not from the outside in. So we have to watch ourselves. We are the church. Now, there's some things I want to encourage you in the next 10 minutes to protect. All right? Got seven of it. Seven of it. Seven of them. I'll not be long. Number one. First of all, we need to protect the name of our church. I said we need to protect the name of our church. Notice that he said there in verse 28. He said, take heed therefore unto you uh, yourselves and all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to, to feed the church of God. The church. Oh, how we need to defend that. Isn't it amazing that we live in a society and in an age where so many churches are taking the word church off their sign? That's right. That's right. We have a sign out front on our property. It has three words. Southwest Baptist Church. Southwest tells folks where we're at. We're on the right. southwest side of Wichita Falls. Uh, Baptist tells people what we believe. We believe in an old book that's still infallible, still inerrant. Amen. Still good as it was the day it was given. Amen. Still is perfect. We believe that. Amen. We believe in salvation by grace through faith, plus nothing, minus nothing. We still believe that. Amen. We still believe in the second coming and the rapture of the saints. We believe Amen. that. We still believe that heaven's sweet and hell's hot. We still preach a real heaven and a real hell. Right. Listen, folks. That old, give me that old time religion they used to sing. Give me that old time religion. This ain't nothing wrong with that old time religion. Yeah, yeah, right. It ain't broke, don't fix it. That's right. Amen. Amen. But, but then that last word, church, that tells everybody what we are. That's right. We're a church. We're a local assembly of baptized, a local body of, of baptized believers assembled together, covenanted together that we might propagate the gospel, go into all the world, preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to absorb all things whatsoever I've commanded you. That's what God put us here to do. Yeah. That's church. And so now they change to put church, take, take church off. They call it stuff like the river or journey or the summit, or I don't even know what none of that stuff means. Right. It don't make sense. Why not just call yourself a church? Ain't nothing wrong with the name. Amen. 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 Oh, but we'll somehow ostracize somebody if we call ourselves Baptists. They're taking Baptists off too, you know. That's right. Oh, we're going to ostracize people. If we call ourselves Baptists, we're going to ostracize. People aren't going to come. They're not, they don't call. Listen. Uh, yeah, the other day I was going, uh, where was I going anyway? I was going somewhere. I was going out to see Don uh, and uh, out, about lake, uh, out by the lake, and, and so Arrowhead. And so I'm going up 281. And uh, I passed this great, big, enormous rodeo arena. That's right. Right? Yeah. And this church and all this property, and it says, Texoma Cowboy Church. You want to know something about Texoma Cowboy Church? You might not know. Texoma Cowboy Church, they minister to more than just cowboys. I bet you there are people there that don't wear cowboy hats. Don't you reckon? I mean, I know. I, I figure that. I don't think I don't think you got people standing at the door saying, where's your cowboy hat? Huh? You packing today? You ain't packing? Go somewhere else. Go, go to Southwest. I don't think they're doing that. 
I don't think they're doing that at all. I'm not making fun of them at all. I'm just saying, they're, they're not ashamed. Hey, they're Texas on the Cowboy Church, and they're doing well, I guess. Look, ain't nothing wrong with the name. Church is still church. Church is good name. Let's don't take that off. Let's keep that on. Let's make sure people know that we belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. We're a church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We're not ashamed of that at all. That's right. So let's protect the name. Protect it. Number two, let's not only protect the name of our church, let's protect the leadership of our church. Amen. The leadership of our church. You know, look again at verse 28. Paul is saying, take ye therefore unto yourselves. Who's that? He's talking to the elders. He's talking to the pastors. He's talking to the bishops there. He said, take care of yourself and the flock. He said, look, the leadership needs to be protected also. This is a problem in so many churches today. It's like we're always looking for something. Uh, I think it was Miss Wanda had a meme on Facebook the other day. said something like this uh, about uh, uh, if all you ever see is the, uh, uh, the negative or something. What was that? Oh, well, it was a good statement. <laughs> Oh, if we'd stop looking for the negative and just start, oh, 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 here it is, here it is, it came to me. If, it, if we stop looking at that which offends us and start looking for that which inspires us, Amen. we'd be better off, something like Amen. that. That's a good statement. I'm glad I remembered it. That was kind of embarrassing. <laughs> Take heed to yourself. Look for things that inspire you in our church. Amen. Look at people that inspire you. Look at things that inspire you. Don't be nitpicking and looking for things that offends us. If we want to be offended. You can be offended. It's easy to be offended. Amen. I'm offended at myself sometimes. Amen. I offend myself. Right. I bet you offend yourself too. Amen. We all do. Sometimes I look at myself in the mirror and say, man, what happened to you? You offend me. But don't look for that. Look for things. And when it comes to leadership, there are no perfect leaders. There are no perfect pastors. Just Jesus. Amen. We make mistakes. Sometimes we have to say we're sorry. I've right. done my share of that. Not ashamed of that. Because I'm human. I make mistakes. Okay? We move on. But the last thing your leader needs. And by the way, I'm not just talking about your pastor. I'm talking about social pastors. I'm talking about those deacons that serve and, and serve the church. Sunday school teachers. Leadership. Man, pray for these folks and pray. Ask God to protect them. we got some great folks leading this church, and I thank God for every one of them. Pray for them. Pray for them. You don't want the devil in here and getting into any of them. That's right. Amen. That's right. They can do it. Even Jesus had to turn to Peter and say, Satan, get thee behind me. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Pray that God will protect the leadership. Pray that God will protect the name of our church. Number three, pray that God will protect the children of our church. Amen. Listen, if the Lord doesn't come back in the next 20 years or 10 years or whatever, we're going to need a group of young people right. that, that we can hand that baton off to and say, you take it now. Amen. Oh, listen, just like Elijah needed Elisha, just like David needed Solomon, just like Paul needed Timothy, you and I as a church, our leadership, we need young people who we can pass that baton to and say, okay, now you serve your generation. Amen. That's why we need every young man and young woman in our church to just continue to grow and step up and because someday we, we want to need you to take the reins. That's why we need to keep our Sunday school strong. That's why we need to keep our kids' program strong. That's why we need the King's Kids on Wednesday night strong. Why we do these things so that our children can learn the Word of God and grow in the Lord so that someday they'll be equipped and ready to take the reins. Go forward. One of the angriest moments in the Lord's ministry on this earth was the day when he was sitting and the disciples were standing out there and there was a circle of people gathered and they were pushing the children back. Remember that? And Jesus sitting there became angry at his disciples. And he said, he said, suffer, allow those children to come unto me. Amen. Why? For such is the kingdom of heaven. Oh, how precious the children. We love them, don't we? Amen. Thank God for them. You know why? Sometimes, look, Daddy, sometimes you get up. On that some morning, you're, you, you're tired, you, you, you're not ready to go to work, you may be a little sick, but you know you got to go. Why? Because them babies, you got to feed them babies. That's right. Tell you what, we got to come to church, we got to make sure our church is strong for the babies. Number four, not only protect the name 
and the, and the leadership and the children, but also we need to protect the testimony of our church. That's why we pay our bills. It's part of our testimony. That's why we beg you to live right in the world. It's part of our testimony. That's why we encourage you to hang around the right crowd. It's part of our testimony. The Bible says in Proverbs 22, 1, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. Amen. As a church, if we lose our testimony, we lose everything. That's right. Sometime back, somebody, and this happens every so often, somebody parked a car in our parking lot and left it there. And I didn't know who it belonged to and it was locked up and and so I'm just looking at it thinking, I think, well, I went inside and got one of our bumper stickers. <laughs> I went back out there and put that, put that I love my church, Southwest Baptist Church bumper sticker on the bumper. Yeah. And I thought, well, man, that would be a good testimony wherever he goes. And then the, hip, then, then the thought hit me. What if the guy goes to a bar <laughs> and his car's out there and it says, I love Southwest Baptist Church well, the thing is, you never know, but that's the way it is, isn't it? You call yourself a Christian, make sure that where you go and what you do, how you live, is a good testimony to our church. That's important that we guard and protect the testimony. I want to go quickly, number five. Not only protect the name and the leadership and the children and the testimony, but let's protect the unity Amen. of our church. Can I ask you to do that, please? Amen. Psalm 133, 1 says, Behold how good. And how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Right. When I think of unity, I always think about Ben Franklin at the beginning of our country when the, that first Continental Congress was having so much trouble and Ben Franklin rose to his feet and he said, Gentlemen, if we do not hang together, we will most assuredly hang separately. Right. And all how important that is. You know how the wolf gets supper? By, by dividing a little lamb from the flock. Right. By, by splitting one away from the, from the flock and getting them off by their self. And listen, that's exactly what the devil uses. He divides. That's his M.O. He divides right. and conquers. Right. We, don't, we don't want that to happen at our church. Amen? Amen? Number six, we need to protect the purity of our church. Look, folks, you want to know what our standard is? In a, so some, Sometimes, every so somebody says, what kind of standards you got at your church? Here they are right here. Amen. Go looking right here. Here they are. Right, right here. 66 right. books. Yeah, that's the standard. That's the standard. Right. We still believe this old book could tell us how to live, how to do right, walk right, talk right. Uh, we, we, this book right here, this is our standard. This is our ruler. Amen. Thy word above all thy name, the Bible says. And we're to contend for that in Jude chapter, uh, Jude, the little book of Jude, verses 3 and 4 says that we're to contend for the faith. Contend for the faith once delivered to the saints. Look, ever so often, you know, we just have to take a little gut check and make sure that we're still on course with this book. We're not perfect. Sometimes we get off course, okay? Let's get back on course. Make sure we're on course with the book. Because right. this is what we can be judged out of someday. And then last but not least, we need to protect the mission of our church. The mission. What is our mission? It's the Great Commission. Go ye therefore into all nations, baptizing them and in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I command you. Now, so it's not our job to go tell folks about Jesus, get them saved, baptize them, add them to the church, and then teach them, disciple them. That's what the church's job is. Amen. If we ever get to the point where we're just satisfied with us four and no more, we're on our way down. We gotta always, always be encouraging ourselves. Yeah, it gets discouraging sometimes. David, he was outside of Ziklag. They just burned the city. They just taken the wives and the children. His men were distraught. He was distraught. They thought about killing David. And the Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. Sometimes you gotta encourage yourself. Amen. And you gotta say, wait a minute, there's still a job to do. Get up, get going. I told my wife the other day, I was so tired, I was leaving my lazy boy, leaned back, and I said, my mind, I told her, I said, baby, my mind says, get up, my body says, stay down. <laughs> Man, that's true, isn't it? That's right. Your mind, your heart says, oh, there's more to do, and sometimes the body, the flesh is weak, the spirit's willing, the flesh is weak, right. but we've got to stay on course. There are still people out there that need Jesus. Amen. 
I think our city is trying to grow. We've got some new plants coming in and new manufacturing that's good. And maybe I'll see our city grow, but that also means there's more people to minister to. There's still people out there that need Jesus. Right. So folks, look, everywhere you go, you better have that track ready. Hey, can I give you a track? Share Jesus with you. Would you take that? Read it sometime. Well, I'm not a very good public speaker, I, but you can do that. Amen. When you leave a tip after you eat a meal, put, put that tip inside that little and just stick it there so they can have that. Look, every look, his word will not return void. Amen. That's our job. Spread it. Get the word out. Jesus still saves. Amen. Amen. Oh, church, I love you. I want our church. I want our church to be healthy and to grow and to thrive, and it is, and I'm thankful to God for that, but let's always be ready to protect what we have because the devil would like to take it away from us. Lord, we love you this morning. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, for this encouragement this morning to take heed to ourselves and to the flock. Oh, Lord, this flock is wonderful. We love it. We love being here. I love being here. But God, I know that the devil would love to destroy it. So God, keep us, help us to stay strong and faithful. And we'll thank you for it. With heads bowed and eyes closed, let me ask you this morning, before we 